midway between Beersheba and Eilat. The Moshav was founded in the summer of 1959 by two young men, Shai ben Eliyahu and Haggai Pua, who were originally from Kfar Yeshua. Times were hard in the early years of Moshav, but they were determined to fulfill the vision of David ben Gurion to make the Negev desert bloom. In 1989, exactly 30 years from that same first summer, Ran, the son of Haggai Porat, founded the Porat Bakery, which started out with only four beehives. Today, with more than 2,000 beehives, it is one of the largest privately owned apiaries in the country and offers a rich and wide variety of honey. This is thanks to the extensive distribution of its beehives, which are located from Ilat in the south to the Huda Mountains in the east and up to the Palapim sand dunes on the west coast. The idea of establishing an apiary came from the wish to open a new branch of agriculture, besides vegetables. The keeping of bees is almost the only type of animal farming where they are looked after from the start of their lives until they die from natural causes. One day old larva with royal jelly, and within 14 days from laying the egg, a new young and unfertilized queen will emerge. The natural reproduction process of the bee is through resettlement. When the amount of flowering in nature rises significantly, the beehive becomes more crowded, a large group of bees will lift up the
have a special language of their own, the language of dance. By using various dance movements, they communicate to each other important information on locations of large concentrations of flowers rich in nectar and pollen. When they are three weeks old, the worker bees leave the hive for the first time to take their first flight to the fields, the citrus groves, or the forests in order to start collecting nectar and pollen. Upon going out into the wide world, they perform a great favor for everyone, which in fact contributes to the survival of all creatures. They pollinate the agricultural crops. Pollen is an important and necessary factor in the fertilization and growing of fruit and vegetables. The bees are considered the most sophisticated pollinators in the insect world. During the process of pollination, the bees transfer the pollen grains from the male to the female parts of the flower. Pollen grains stick to the fuzzy body of the bee and are effectively transferred from flower to flower. The bees are able to distinguish between different flowers and to take great care to keep their pollens separate from pollens of different flowers. On each flight they take outside the beehive, the bees will concentrate on one species of flower. Here begins the story of the production of honey. When the bee settles on the flower, it extracts the nectar by way of its special bee and put it in the honey sack on its stomach. Then starts the process of converting the nectar to honey. We place our beehives in areas which are rich in flowers. These areas are called pasture region. Each pasture region has its own type of flowers and therefore its own variety of honey. The region, the climate and the type of soil all influence the flowering and give each type of honey its unique taste, color, texture and aroma. The bee brings back to the beehive the nectar, which she carries in her honey sack, and the pollen which she carries on her legs. This is the food which the bees will feed to the bee larva in the cells of the comb. In addition, the honey stored in the honeycomb cells matures and is preserved by being sealed with a layer of wax. Honey can be preserved for a number of years without spoiling, thanks to its high concentration of natural sugars. The bees have many enemies in nature, such as the oriental wasp, which preys on bees to use them as food for their own larvae, and the bee-eating birds, which attack and eat the bees. The biggest danger is now from the Varroa destructor, which is an external parasitic mite that attacks the honeybees. It was discovered in Israel in 1984, and has spread rapidly across the country. The Varroa destructor can weaken a whole beehive. It can be struck by viruses. The immune systems of the bees are also weakened, and the whole hive could collapse. Therefore, today it is not possible to keep bees without taking preventative measures against it. The 
production of honey is an official agricultural sector in Israel, along with other branches of animal farming such as the dairy industry, the fish industry, and many more. The bee industry also provides pollination services to crop growers in their fields and orchards. One third of the world's food is directly pollinated by bees, and this actually brings about the existence of our next generation. Another third is pollinated indirectly. For example, the cows produce milk and eat alfalfa and hays, which has been pollinated by bees. Our hives are distributed for pollination over thousands of dunams in Israel, and they contribute directly to Israeli agriculture. When the farmer identifies the beginning of flowering buds of his crops, he requests the placement of beehives through our online system. When we get a call requesting hives for pollination, we arrive with beehives which have been carefully checked and found to meet our high standards, and place them in the requested field. We provide pollination services to many different crops, melons, pumpkins, zucchini, watermelons, sunflowers, almonds, avocados, citrus fruits, and bell peppers. The pollination of bell peppers inside indoor structures is a method especially developed by our apiary. One hive can cover a pollination area of about three to seven dunes, a process that until now cannot be performed by any machine. Pollination of crops is essential for the creation of the fruit. In addition, it increases the quota and weight of the fruit, which means a lot more money back for the farmers and growers. When the upper floors in the hive are filled with honey, we separate them from the lower layers. We move the racks and take them on truck to our new and advanced honey harvesting institute in England. After unloading, the racks of honey are weighed and put into the honey harvesting machine. Great care is taken to keep the racks of honey separate from different pasture areas. The first step of harvesting is that the honeycombs are put into an opening machine where a special knife removes the layer of wax which has sealed the cells of the honeycomb. From the opening machine, the honeycombs are automatically passed on to the harvesting machine. Here the honey is removed from the cells by use of the centrifuge, which operates using centrifugal force. From the centrifuge, the honey, which contains beeswax particles, flows into a stainless steel pack. Here the beeswax particles float to the surface, as their density is not as great as that of the honey, and now they are easily removed. The next stage is that the now pure honey flows through a system of pipes and is pumped into stainless steel pack. Here too, each barrel contains only one type of honey. Thank you. 
quality inspections carried out by the Ministry of Health and other professional bodies. Samples of our money are taken for laboratory testing for So that we can measure the amount of nectar in the pasture areas, we place a beehive on a sophisticated scale which serves real-time data to our company computers in our offices. This enables us to know the start and finish of the flower times. Our honey is pure, natural and classified into types as per strain. We produce honey from a rich variety of different types of flowers, including eucalyptus blossom from forests, the negative tamarisk flower, citrus blossom from the western negative, the juju tree blossom, the avocado blossom, and a variety of wild flowers. This is the story of our honey. Without a sting in the tail, it is the story of our love of honey, our love of bees and our love of people. And if we left you wanting more, you are invited to the tasting corner of our store to try for yourself some samples of our whole variety of honey. So you can decide for yourself which type you prefer.